It's week five of my Summer with Lisa Kleypas challenge and we are on Scandal in Spring. Hi, my name's Bee. Welcome to my channel. Mama needs to read some romance because no one in this book would tell me that my food is yucky. So I have to admit, when I found out that Cam was not in this book, I was less enthused. All I wanted was for Daisy and Cam to get back together after their really steamy scene in Devil in Winter. But I think this book is really good and it's very different from all the rest of them, which I really appreciated. We've got Daisy. She's the last wallflower who hasn't gotten married yet. And her father says, you know what, we've tried, it's not working out. and. I think that you need to be betrothed to Matthew Swift, who works for him. So her dad is basically going to make her marry one of his employees. She's not thrilled, especially because she hates this guy. She knows him, not impressed, not attracted to him. However, he's changed a little bit, so there might be some uh, sparks flying here and there. We'll find out. Additionally, he's got some pretty big secrets and it makes for a very exciting book. And I remember reading this before. I think I've only read this one other time. The end, I was exhausted. It was a long day. I could not put it down. I had to see what was going to happen. I think it's one of the most exciting scenes that I've read in this series. So I'm really looking forward to reading this. I'm going to be telling you what song I think is their love theme. We'll be checking in throughout the week as I'm reading. So after this part, there are going to be spoilers, but I hope you'll join me. If you've already read this book before, come along and relive the magic. Or if you're reading it for the first time, read along with me. All right, let's do this. Well, we are off and running, folks. I'm in the middle of chapter two, and already, as always, quite a bit has happened. First of all, Mary Jane Wells. I love that narrator, but quite frankly, with so many Americans being heavy hitters in this book, I kind of wish they'd actually gotten an American because her accents for them are very interesting. There's a lot of like weird New Yorker, and her father specifically, I have a hard time even listening without laughing because. Mary Jane Wells plays him as like a 30s gangster. We're gonna marry you, see? Hey, you're not doing so well in the season, see? So we're gonna get you married. Yeah, I don't have a cigar, but I do have some mascara. Thomas Bowman calls his daughter a parasite, which is really not fair. I mean, what is she even able to do at this day and age as a woman who's unmarried? I mean, there's not really anything for her to do. It's not like she can go out and just get a job somewhere. But anyway, he just says, look, it's not working out, so this is what I've decided. We're gonna get you to marry Matthew Swift. He's my protege. I want him to inherit the company because my three sons are the worst, one of which we will be meeting in the next book. And yeah, he just says, look, you're gonna marry Matthew Swift because I'm done. I'm done trying to get you married off to the British aristocracy. It's not happening. So then we fast forward. We are back at Stony Cross Park. It's been a while. Obviously, last book, we spent most of the time at the gaming club, at Jenner's Gaming Club. So it's nice to be back at Stony Cross Park. It's beautiful as always. And I had to chuckle when Daisy says that she is staying in Lady Aileen's room and that she, her favorite place in there is the attached cabinet room that was brought over from France with the Chase Lounge. And I'm thinking, oh, Daisy, if you knew what happened in that little cabinet room and on that Chase Lounge, in Again the Magic, you might not want to sit there and read. I'm just saying. Anyway, she goes to make some wishes in a well. She's got a bunch of hairpins. She's ready to make some major wishes. And as she's wishing for the love of her life, who strides up but Matthew Swift. He's filled out to the point where she doesn't even recognize him. She remembers him from years and years ago when he was just this frail looking guy. He was kind of nerdy apparently and now he's just become Hottie McHot Pants apparently. She's intrigued but she realizes very quickly that he's Matthew Swift and then immediately there's tension and she lets out of the bag that she's supposed to marry him and he isn't willing to promise that that won't happen. He also lets slip that he thinks that she's gorgeous. She has no idea that he's been carrying a torch for her for a very long time. And not only that, he's got some major secrets in his past, which leads me to, I think I already know between two songs, which I want to be the love theme for this couple. I either want it to be Building a Mystery by Sarah McLaughlin or, oh, there goes one of my friends, or he's outside, he's in the backyard. Sorry. 
or Take a Bow by Madonna. They're two awesome songs. It's a great couple. I'm still a little sad that it's not Cam in this book, but Matthew Swift turns out to be pretty awesome as we shall see soon. I was gonna do a really great walk and talk, but now I feel more like a sit and talk. Oh my gosh, you saw some of the farm. Well, you missed the five-year-old running to get a farm cat and he got the cat before I could get to him and the cat scratched him. And then there was this whole thing of like, <sighs> Is the cat up to date on shots? And do we need to do a rabies protocol? And we need to go to the doctor and figure that whole thing out with antibiotics. And <laughs> it has been ridiculous. This was when we were dropping my eight year old off at farm camp. So it was already a crazy busy day because the camp is not close to our house. And then it was pouring down rain. I got all wet and disgusting. So it's been a long day, but I was very thankful to be at Stony Cross Park in my mind during waits for medicine and things like that. So. That was really nice. I'd say I hope my five-year-old learned his lesson, but I highly doubt it. He loves cats too much. <laughs> so anyway, but back to the book. I'm in the midst of chapter five right now, and I will just highlight two of my favorite parts. For me, this is when the book really turned around, because uh, initially I was just so disappointed that it wasn't Cam. I know I keep saying that, but when Daisy is trying to help free the goose and Matthew Swift helps and then they get tangled up or the goose attacks him and like bites him in the face. So she is like trying to check out his eye and she's straddling him and then he's helping her. The two of them are pulling bits of fluff and feathers out of their hair and she talks about how he's built so well. He's got those gorgeous blue eyes and he's tan. It's like, okay, I could get behind this book. I could, I could get excited about Matthew Swift. It was a really great scene and I chuckled when he found a reason to sit and uh, sort of curl up for a minute there after he moved her from his lap. And it's like, oh, I wonder what's going on there, Matthew. Oh my, it was a really cute scene. And then my other favorite is the bloodiest game of lawn bowling that ever was held at Stony Cross Park. It was remembered for years afterwards where Daisy and Matthew, they're playing against one another and they forget about everybody else. You see the passion and their supposed hatred for one another. That's really, it's just passion and it's gonna get realized. So it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun that scene. I can't help myself. And this library in my county, their regular book sale just any time of year is better than a lot of the library book sales that are like special times. They have like two floors of books they can just house. And I got nine books and I barely spent, what did I spend, like eight bucks? It was crazy. And I've gotten some other good stuff. I can't wait to do my next book haul. I am in the middle of chapter eight right now. And some other cute scenes happened. I had forgotten how good this book was. When they decide to do parlor games after dinner and he doesn't even want to, but he only decides to do it because Daisy's going to be there. Not only that, at dinner, right before they do the parlor games, the guy that the, she's hoping will end up being her new suitor. I can't think of his name. The one he's from Scotland, like way North Scotland. He said something about how it wouldn't be good to have a Daisy in a vase of roses and what Matthew immediately defended her and talked about how great daisies were. I thought that was so sweet. So when they go to the parlor games, I laughed so hard when he had to be the cow. <laughs> He's like, moo. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. But the best, of course, was when it was time for Daisy to do her forfeit and she pulled a name out of a, ha a bowl. She said it was Matthew Swift, but his name wasn't even in there. She just said that so he would have to go and kiss her. Now he kisses her fingers, which she was very disappointed by, but then the two of them storm off together. They go into the library and they're arguing and he realizes how much she really wanted him to kiss her and he can't hold back anymore. And he lays one on her and man, is it good. It is so good. So obviously they really have feelings for one another. Now they all know. The only problem is Lillian really doesn't like him and she's not gonna make this easy for Daisy at all. And also Matthew said he could marry her because he has a secret identity and he can't risk her finding out what's really going on with him. So mystery continues. So now I'm in the midst of chapter 13. I forgot to tell you in the last section 
there's the pony cart incident. She, Daisy is in a pony cart going through the woods and gets attacked by a wild pig and falls out of the pony cart. And Matthew West comes up with Westcliff and Landringdon and I'm trying to think of the other one, that weird guy with a strange accent. Um, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so Matthew is very loving and caring and she absolutely loves that. But then he lets her go back to the estate with Landringdon because they seem to think it's best after all the fighting and with the lawn bowling. So, but she was so disappointed because she was really enjoying being close to him, but he just sort of gave it up. Lillian again is saying that he's just pretend that Matthew's pretending to be whoever it is that Daisy wants him to be so that he can get the father's company. But Daisy says, well, if he's trying to just be who I wanted to be, wouldn't he try to have put the moves on me and take me back to the estate himself after the pony cart? So another big thing happening during this part, Lillian goes into labor and she has a baby. Sebastian and Matthew and Marcus are all going in different directions trying to find a doctor after their regular doctor fell and hurt himself and they Matthew finds a vet who <laughs> delivers the baby and it goes really well the vet's name is Merritt and so Lillian and Marcus decide to name their daughter Merritt. Merritt is in the newest book Devil in Disguise which I'm really excited to read. But there are all these little signs that Matthew really has loved Daisy forever. He knows her birthday. He also knows her favorite wine but the biggest tell is he saved a button that has a locket of her hair that was in her dad's vest that was ruined and he's kept it in his pocket for years and I just thought that was the sweetest thing or extremely creepy but mostly sweet because it's a Lisa Kleypas novel and maybe another novel I'd be very worried, <laughs> but not this one. So Daisy and Matthew decided to both use Lord Landringdon to their own devices. Matthew really wants to unload Daisy. He gets so overcome by his feelings for her that he's just trying to get her married off. So he's talking about how amazing she is to Lord Landringdon and he's like, really? And then Evie tells Daisy to use Lord Landringdon to make Matthew jealous. So Daisy tells Landringdon that that's what she wants to do and he's very relieved because he can't stand Daisy honestly but as their week of pretending to be in love progresses Landringdon really falls for her and the banter this book is full of great banter between Daisy and Landringdon as he's telling her that he really feels for her before she accidentally pushes him into a fountain it was a great scene and then the banter between Daisy and Matthew later on it's just the, there's the quick 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 dialogue that is just so hilarious and I enjoyed it immensely as usual this book book has a lot of Marcus in it. I feel like he's in all the books so much, but especially in this book because Lillian is going to have the baby and Marcus gets to really talk a lot with Matthew because Marcus understands what it is to love a Bowman woman. And also Marcus has an interest in and working with Matthew going forward. So things get really steamy. Daisy's upset because she she doesn't think Matthew's ever gonna say, gonna do anything. And she confronts him in the bachelor's house, which of course, when you think about the bachelor's house, I think of Gideon Shaw and that's where he stayed when he would go on his benders and uh, where Olivia confronted him when he was naked in the bathtub. And so of course my mind goes back to that. Daisy decides she's gonna make Matthew talk to her. The way that she does that is she takes a key, locks the door to his bedroom with both of them inside and puts the key down her bodice. And then basically he has to help her undress in order to get the key. But you can guess what happens next. And it is beautiful and steamy and adorable. <laughs> Just the two of them and you know, afterwards he says, yeah, we're going to get married, but he's very practical. And this is where I was left. I was let down a little bit because he really is quite practical. And I get that opposites attract and she does being such a whimsical person could benefit from somebody that is so pragmatic. But when he says to her after they've made love, he's like, I'm not, I'm not really a romantic kind of guy. And I'm hope, I'm hopeful that maybe he is more than he says that he is, but he really is. He's not the more sweet type that is my favorite. But you know, you gotta have all kinds, right? So. It's a rainy Saturday. It's only 72 degrees and it's July. And that's kind of crazy for this area. So my husband took the boys to the indoor playground and my daughter is taking a nap. And so I'm out on the porch enjoying a nice summer rain and reading more of my book. I just finished chapter 16 and things are about to make a turn for the bananas. 
Uh, mostly this was a lot of talking and some sweet love scenes, but a lot of talking between Lillian and Daisy, you know, just trying to feel things out. Lillian even confronts Matthew with her concerns and he basically says, look, I'm not gonna be your dad's puppet and I'm gonna do what's best for her and what she wants, which I think made Lillian feel better. But when Westcliff and Matthew had a conversation, he was concerned about Matthew's past and the fact that Matthew wouldn't confide in Westcliff, when again, Westcliff said he would give Matthew his word. He's like the most honorable man around. And he said, if I give you my word not to tell, will you tell me what's going on in your past? And he said, no. And so he said, I can't, I can't back this marriage then. But it seems like things are proceeding and Daisy's mother is not thrilled because she wanted Daisy to marry a peer. But her dad is thrilled because he obviously, now he gets to have Matthew as his son-in-law, which is what he wanted. And they're also going to have a big, big wedding. And Matthew has some hesitancy towards that because again, like his whole past and family are a mystery to them. Lillian is thrilled, but feels badly for Daisy because now her parents get what they want in a nice big wedding because of course Lillian and Marcus ran off to Gretna Green. So it's nice that they get a nice big wedding. They go to a May Fair, which Daisy was so adorable in the fact that she doesn't understand a lot of the debauchery that's going on. And he's sort of shielding her from that, trying to distract her from less savory things going on, shall we say. But they find a fortune teller and she has Daisy look into a mirror and the fortune teller is very disturbed by what she sees and tells Daisy through verse that she's going to have a broken heart. And while Matthew takes no stock in it, Daisy is feeling concerned. Well, it starts to pour down rain and they take the carriage home and it is about to go down. We've reached the beginning of the end. As Daisy and Matthew enter the mansion, everything begins to unravel. Matthew is hit over the head as he enters a room and then handcuffed as Mr. Wendell Waring explains the actual background of Matthew Phelan. His father left while his mother was pregnant. She died in childbirth and then he was in an orphanage until he was 11 when Mr. Wendell Waring purchased him to be a companion to Henry, his son. Henry was not a good kid. He had gambling debts. He was carousing all the time. He was not doing his studies when honestly it was Matthew who got him through lots of Harvard. But at one point, Henry ran out of money. He had a lot of debts. So he stole from the Waring family and decided to pretend that Matthew had done it. Well, the court system over there was not fair and Matthew was found guilty. However, everyone knew that it wasn't really Matthew. And when he was being taken to prison, they actually pulled the carriage over and gave him a horse and told him to run. And so he did. He went to New York, he sold the horse, and then as quickly as he could, he made better of himself. He attached himself to the Bowman family because he really respected Thomas Bowman and quickly thereafter fell in love with Daisy. He was 20 at the time and decided the best thing to do was just to say that his family name was Swift because it was a respected name, but it had a lot of branches. So people wouldn't question if he wasn't all that well known. He could be one of the distant Swifts as far as he was concerned. As everyone's hearing this, Daisy and then Lillian help Matthew pick the locks of his handcuffs. Matthew sighs relief when he realizes that he has friends now. He has people that are supporting him now. Daisy has not quavered at all in her love for him. Westcliff is furious that they are doing this on his ground, land that has belonged to his family for five centuries. And he tries everything to keep them from taking him. The Bowmans, both Thomas and his wife, are supportive. Although Thomas at one point was worried that Matthew thought that Thomas was ridiculous, but it's very clear that Matthew had nothing for respect for, for Thomas from the beginning. And when Matthew realizes that Wendell Waring is about to pull a pistol out of his pocket, Matthew says, I'll go. I'll go with you because he didn't want anything to happen to the people that he loved. And he's just thought, well, this is it. My time is now finally up. So they go in a carriage in the pouring rain and Westcliff is following in another carriage. And the storm is such that they're basically the stream that they were about to pass over becomes a river. And Matthew had his hands shackled 
in the carriage and the carriage gets pulled into this new river and is taken into the water. It's believed that he's probably drowned. When Daisy hears this, she just doesn't want to go on. She can't imagine life without Matthew. And everyone is there to support her as they are looking for his body. One evening, I think it's two days later, she's kind of slumped in a chair in the library, just trying to get her wits about her when who enters? but Matthew. They share some beautiful words, they make love, and they decide that they are all too excited about getting married in the future, and now he doesn't have to keep any secrets from her. Well, we fast forward to the wedding, and I just, I get teary even thinking about it, just seeing all of the girls so very happy. Daisy has bought a beautiful fisherman's home in England. She and Matthew are going to live there, so Daisy and Lillian will still be close together and she'll still have all her girls with her. Sebastian taps Evie's belly surreptitiously so you know that Evie's got a secret, which is just so exciting. And I can't remember the birth order of Evie and Sebastian's kids, but I know it's got to at least be probably Phoebe or Gabriel coming up and those are the Ravenel's books. So how exciting to know that there's another one on the way. It's so lovely. And at the very end, the girls all meet together, all four of them, I believe in the orangery, and they raise their glasses high and they're just talking about how triumphant they've been, that three years ago they were all wallflowers and look at them now, all blissfully happy. And I loved how it ended with the four of them together just as it started. What a beautiful ending. I gave this book four stars because Matthew again, he was just not my favorite, but I do think he was good for Daisy and I really did enjoy it. It was quite exciting in lots of places, but it couldn't be a perfect five stars for me uh, just because as I said, Matthew was just, not my favorite. So other than that though, I really enjoyed it. I loved being back at Stony Cross Park and it was just a great official ending. And as I said earlier in the book, I couldn't decide between the love theme of Take a Bow by Madonna or Building a Mystery by Sarah McLaughlin. And I still can't decide. So I'm just saying both. And if you think that you know which one would suit the song better or if you have another idea, let me know. Or maybe you don't care about that. <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. So there you have it the official end. However, a surprise happens. We've got a wallflower Christmas, which I'm going to be covering next week. All the girls are back together and they're all still blissfully happy, which is just so wonderful. But now we have Rafe Bowman, or should I say Rake Bowman coming on the scene. He's Lillian and Daisy's older brother and he's kind of a mess. I'm looking forward to hitting this up next week. I hope you'll join me. I hope that you're enjoying whatever it is that you are reading and that you're having a great summer or whatever season it is when you're watching in this video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me this long. You deserve a medal. Take care. Bye.